Hello, I'm your girl, Michelle Hope Walker. All right, you all, I need your help. I need you all to support me as I go to court um, tomorrow, which tomorrow is Thursday, and it is May 19, 2022. It's at 8.30 a.m. Or if you're watching this on Thursday, May 19th, come on down today, 8.30 a.m., um, I don't know how long it's going to go on, so it could be all day. It might even be more days than just today from what I'm learning. Um, I'm going to court because I'm a witness to the hate crime that was done against me. So I've been subpoenaed to go to court to um, answer the questions about the hate crime that was um, done to me. And if you need more information, you can go back on my YouTube, Michelle Hope Walker Speaks. And you'll see the videos I did back around because the first one where they put the note in my car. And again, my building, I live in Koreatown. My building's a locked building. And this is here in Los Angeles, uh, California. And no, I don't like giving out all this information, you all. But I'm seeking your help to support me. Um, and so, and to come to court physically in person and support me. So, um, it's just certain information that I need to give out. Um, even if I'm not totally even comfortable with it because y'all know I like my safety. But also I see this as a safety of me um, talking to you all, the public, about the situation um, so you all can also help to keep me safe. And also so there's more eyes on what is going on because, again, sometimes what's done um towards us and against us black women is usually kept quiet and um, unfortunately sometimes people don't help support us when hate crimes are done against us like they do like they help other races other people who are non-black how they you know help them when a hate crime is done against them I felt throughout this process that as a black woman um, and a victim of a hate crime that I have not really received as much support, you know, um, it's like they tried to, some different people have tried to say it's this or is that when actually it was a hate crime, you know, part of, okay, you know, cause they said, well, my building is a private building, a locked building. So also, uh, the person did do like a break and enter into the building. And then when they left the note, my car break and enter into my car because no one is supposed to go into your car without your permission, um, type thing. And so I'm on March 30th is when they left the hate note in my car. It's like they went and just ransacked my car, you know, in a sense. And I found stuff on the ground outside my car. And that's why I can so tell what's going on because, you know, I keep my areas clean, you know, around my car um, and different things like that. And um, I keep my car inside pretty much, you know, empty, you know. So, you know, I'm like, where did they even find some of this? <laughs> you know, um, but anyway, so then in my car, there was a green ticket. Like, and then also I later seen it had hate notes um, on it, which um, I had to give that ticket to the police um, when they finally did do the report. Because at the beginning, the challenge um, on what happened to me March 30th, it was challenging trying to find a LAPD um, police officer to take a police report about the hate crime done against me because as soon as that happened on March 30th, 2021, I immediately, you know, it frightened me. So I immediately went to my local LAPD office, which is the LAPD Olympic division. There was someone in there, but, um, and I knocked on the glass. No one came to the door to at least try to see if they could help me. I called the numbers on there. The phone just rung and no one never came to the phone. Um, so also because I'm a black woman, you know, I went ahead and just left, you know, because you have to watch, <laughs> you know, because um, um, not too long ago, too, you had seen where there was a black person outside that Olympic division. I don't know what that black person was doing, so I'm not saying, you know, I don't know about what happened, but they got killed outside the police, um, the Olympic police division, you know. And so I know sometimes, you all know, you can go look at my other videos where I talk about racism against black women, then just racism against black people as a whole, you know. Unfortunately, sometimes um, just the color of our skin in our ethnicity that we're black you know um the reason why i say ethnicity because a lot of times especially out here in california la there's a lot of people that's actually my color but they may not consider themselves black people they consider themselves other races you know um and they don't even get discriminated against as much as black women and black people do um at times here in la and i guess we could say really around the world right you all but um 
And so we have to watch even when we're asking for help, you know, because sometimes even when they just see us, they just assume, unfortunately, some people assume that black people are doing something wrong just when they see them. You know, not a black person, we're not doing anything wrong, you know. And in that context, I was trying to seek, you know, the opportunity to be able to file a police report um, because someone had just left a hate note in my car. Um, and I didn't know if next, you know, cause again, I have locked building, everything's locked, you know, so how this person is, it got in and again, they came twice. They came again, April 6th, um, where they did put like blood, like paper all in front of my car, you know, um, now that time when I called the police, um, the police did come to my house and take the report and oh my gosh, it was a great officer that came, um, a white officer, tall white officer, you know, that um, came. And you'll hear me talk about racism because sometimes in this context, it, it can sometimes make a difference, you know, in the sense of who helped me, you know, um, in the sense of who is doing hate crime against me, you know, and, um, and, and for the reason why you will um, see me giving the race. And also, I'm, I'm trying not to mention names, you know, because, again, I'm trying to tell you all what actually has went on. But at the same time, keeping a sense of privacy, innocence, and um, not just detailing the whole uh, as far as names and different things like um, that as much as possible. I mean, again, you come to the court, you'll hear the names and see the rest, you know. Um, and that's, again, um, on May 19th, 8.30 a.m. at um, in Los Angeles, California, um, at the L.A. Court, um, the county court building, which is right downtown here, Temple and Spring, right in there, um, Department 34, which is on the third floor. Um, and you all know my name. It's uh, Michelle Walker, Michelle Hope Walker. Hope is my nickname. Um and again, so I'm sharing this information and really humbly um, coming to you all because I really would like your support. I really would like as many people to be there as possible to support me because I really don't know if I will be protected, you know, in that courtroom in the sense of, um, you know, from the person who did the hate crime to me. I don't know. It just seems like... Um, Everyone around this, uh, so the girl that did come to find out, and again, I don't know this person at all. <laughs> I've never seen this person or anything until they gave me the picture. Um, even my apartment complex, you know, which, um, you know, I do like them, my apartment complex. If someone does an apartment complex, they'll put, you know, apartment manager will put pictures of the person all around so we know who to look for to make sure they don't come in and, and do anything to us, you know, different things like that. But I know with this incident that happened, you know, when I asked for the pictures from my apartment manager or I just um, was trying to be able to see who was doing this to me, my apartment manager said she had to give everything to the police and she would not let me see you know anything and so it was um the police um department and so shout out to those detective and then his assistant you know that was there to help me um and I went to, at that time <laughs> you know at the Olympic division when uh that detective finally you know um I got the detective where he was um and he had me come to the Olympic division um police department where I was able to um see the picture of the person that they're saying that they, you know, seen, at least they did see the part where she had put the blood, like, well, at first they didn't know if it was he or she, you know, um, but then after they arrested the person, because what happened is then literally that same day, I came home and the picture, I seen the person that was actually exactly in the picture, so I left home. <laughs> Like, oh, you know, I didn't want to because I don't know what this person would do. And then we think right now of the attacks of how black people were attacked in Buffalo, New York, killed, you know, and there's many other attacks where black people are attacked and hate crimes are done against us black people. And sometimes there's things that went on beforehand, but no one took our issues seriously. You know, which what I have had the challenge of, you know, I couldn't find anyone to take the police report at first. The LAPD officer wouldn't take the police. You know, I couldn't get anyone to take the police report. I even flagged down. Um, I seen a police a police officer at a 7-Eleven. And so I even went to that person. <laughs> and that was a black female police officer. And she wouldn't take the report, you know. So when I talk about color in a sense, I'm not saying one color is better than the other. Because I have found 
through this and just some things in my life that different people will help you regardless of what color they are, you know. So shouts out to all just the good people of the world. You know, um, I appreciate all of you. And I've noticed that it's not always even a black person. It's the same color as me. Sometimes actually it's a black person that is, you know, giving me, the, you know. So again, but at the same time, many black people too have supported me and Asian people have supported me and the people, you know, and whatever is going on, you know, that I need support in, you know. So, um, but in this, I noticed, you know, so come to find out, you know, the girl is Asian who was doing, and I don't know this person at all. Um, I remember the officer at the time that, um, because again, so I left and I called the police, you were my detectives, right? Who are police, you know, and I told them, you know, it's like, she's right there at the apartment, you know, so I left, you know, because I didn't want her to, I don't know what this person could do, if they could try to kill me or whatever, and that's what was so big about this whole incident, I don't know what this person would do to me next, you know, um, and as we see again, what just happened in Buffalo, New York, that people will kill black people just because they don't like black people, just because they don't like our black skin, and I've talked about this before in other videos, just because they don't like the black body, now you all know me, Michelle Barker, I love everybody, but but unfortunately, you know, when we experience racism um, experiences, we do need to talk about them, you know, to encourage other people on how to be safe and hopes that they don't experience these um, racist attacks or, or if they get a hate crime done against them on what to do. You know, so also I do these videos to help people that um, may experience what I've experienced, it, you know. But again, this video is where you all please come. And again, this is in Los Angeles, California, to support me in court. I'm the witness. And so I've got subpoenaed to come and, and witness um, about what happened to me a year ago, the hate crime. Now, um, and like I said, I don't, you know, the, every a lot of people on the case. So the girl is Asian. I noticed the DA is Asian. I noticed even my detective is Asian. And again, uh, but my detective has been supportive to him. Like I said, when I called and I told him, I think, you know, it's right there, you know, they came and they arrested. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that this totally makes difference, you know, but I can say, you know, um, I do thank God, you know, for the detective and different things that he's done. And the other detective has since now, who well, he was over actually hate crimes. This detective recently just told me, as I talked to him yesterday, that that detective has retired. Um, you know, because again, the big part of this is that it's a hate crime. And that's my challenge too, that I feel like that some people keep trying to take it out of the hate crime box, you know. And so it's almost like they, you know, don't want to admit that, you know, this is a hate crime that it was done. That me, a black woman, has had a hate crime done uh, uh, against me from an Asian woman. You, that I do not know. <laughs> I don't even know who this person is. You know, I've never had any encounters with this person. I, I don't know, you know, um, you know, but um, and um, that also in this, I don't totally feel supported. Now, today I um, went to the victims, the hate crime. I don't know if, the, if it was the hate crime office of victim support, but I know it was supposed to be like the victim support. And I've, at, you know, to get resources on trying to get them to help, you know, support me in this or whatever their services are, you know, just trying to help get their services because this is a hate crime. You know, part of it is a hate crime, but I understand they're saying, but also this person did a breaking and entering because they weren't supposed to be on our property and our building property and a breaking and entering of being in my um, car, um, putting hate notes. And so back to the hate notes. So um, again, the police LAPD took the original hate note, but um, so uh, I don't even curse, so I don't even gonna say this word, but I'll put it up there of what, um, you know, and then it talked about strangers, it talked about um, you keep us out, and then on the other side is where it really referenced black people is where it said, uh, stole, get back immediately, no slaves allowed. Well, who most dominantly are they talking about when they're talking about slave? You know what I'm saying? Then you have to remember that I live in Koreatown. So even my building is majority Asian. Um, it's few, uh, it's some um, Latino and some other um, races as well. It's few um, blacks, I believe, a uh, couple of other couples, the few blacks, I mean, I say few, about three of us um, <laughs> at the building. Um, and I believe they're even more African. Um, uh, uh, descent and uh, well, we're all African descent, but I'm just saying, you know, um, anyway, um, so to point me out and to point my car out in that whole lot, you know, 
um, of cars, full of cars, you know, um, which is a lot parking garage. You know, we have to have keys to get into every little um, area of our building, you know, um, and we have cameras everywhere. Um, so, um, you know, that scared me because that let me know. And they didn't take any. I didn't see anything taken out my car on March 30th. But I did see this hate as if they wanted me to see this. They they want and they were telling me to get out, <laughs> you know, basically. Um, they were saying, so get back immediately. No slaves allowed. So, you know, now I've been here going on 11 years. So 10 plus years, <laughs> you know, and um, in Koreatown and um, in my building, you know, um, and so it's like, you know, and I hadn't had this trouble before. This is very interesting. So this happened again um, last year. Um, and it, like I said, the first one, March 30th, um, 2021, where I went to my car. It was in the evening time. It was around, um, I believe it was like between like six and eight, you know, went to my car and I was actually getting ready to go run to the store. And um, I seen all this and I just stopped that. And I went straight to the LAPD Olympic Division because that scared me. Um, like I said, I didn't get any help there. Um, and uh, even I called numbers. So even I seen a police officer and tried to file a report. Even after that, I went to the LAPD headquarters to try to see at least surely at the headquarters, I should be able to file a report and no one took a report then either. Um, so it was April 6th um, when I went to my car and that was around 8 something and p.m. and seen this blood paper in front of my car um and I called the police immediately you know because again this is all harassment this is all you know um trying to intimidate me scare me I hate crimes you know it gets me because of my race you know and um so I immediately called the police and uh thank god the police did come then and like I said an awesome officer that um has even talked about you know car locked or unlocked no one's supposed to go in your car um you know, and, um, you know, he was just very supportive and I really appreciate him so much, you know, um, because when all this is done to you, I mean, you just like, you know, cause it's a hate crime literally because of who you are, your color of skin, you know, I can't change the color of my skin, not nor would I want to. I love, I enjoy who I am. I love myself. God made me this color and who I am. And I thank God for me. And I thank God for the way he made me. I love me. I'm beautiful, you know? And so, um, so just the point, though, that all the locks we have, that this person is able to constantly get through them all and 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 do these scare tactics and do these things against me, you know. So at that time, I told that officer about the March 30th, um, about the note being in the car, um, you know. And so, again, the key point of this video is I need you all to come. <laughs> Here's the notice of me. I need you all to come Two, um, it's going to be the 210 West Temple Street. So 210 West Temple Street, Los Angeles, California, 90012. Um, so again, um, and it says the subpoena, it says subpoena for witness right there. You see it says subpoena for witness. Um, and the date is, the hearing date is uh, May 19th. 2022 8:30 a.m. So that's tomorrow. Court location, Department 34. So that's third floor, you all. Um, and it's saying in room three dash thirteen. Um, and so Los Angeles, California. So it's 210 West Temple Street, you all. So again, that's downtown L.A. Um, and uh, this uh, Superior Court of Los Angeles County. Um, and it's third floor. So again, get there way before 8.30. Don't wait till 8.30. Get there way before then. <laughs> again, it may be all day. I don't know when I'm going in, but I appreciate whatever time you get off work, whatever, just come down. I might still be there. They're saying it could be an all day thing. It could be we got to come back the next day. You know, like I've mentioned to them because y'all know I have different disabilities, you know, from the asthma to the nerve pain to, you know, the food allergies and different things. So I can't really eat things. Else. So I got to take food. I got to take doctor notes. I got to take asthma medicine. You know, um, you know, for me, it's hard to be able to sit for too long. I got to be able some time to stand, you know, it's just, uh, you know, disabled, you know. And so a lot of issues there that I did mention that to the detective and even to the victims um, 
um, support uh, that's supposed to help us victims of hate crime and victims, um, period, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, so just support and, and for me. Again, I only need people that are for me <laughs> that are going to be there to support me and help cheer me on. You know, like I help cheer a lot of people on. You see all my social media, I'm always cheering people on or helping people or giving people information or, you know, because that's the type of person I am. I love people no matter what your race is. I love people, you know. So now I'm calling upon you all to be there for me, you know, um, because I really don't feel supported in this. Sometimes when... Even I'm telling what happened. I don't feel some time that the people are totally supporting. But I can say I do thank those detectives that on um, April 21st, uh, I first met them on April 20th when they came. They came to my place and I showed them downstairs I, when well, they came to my building. And I showed them downstairs where everything had happened and different things like that. And then, uh, like I said, the next day on April 21st, I went to LA Police Division where the detective told me to come where I could see the picture because my apartment manager didn't give me the picture of who she seen on camera who did this. Um, but she said she had to give it to the police department, so I had to get it from the police department. And so um, he let me see who it was. And literally, when I came home, I seen that person who had gave the picture showed me on the picture there so I left because I didn't want the person to attack me you know and I let them know this person is now at <laughs> you know the building now can you please come get them you know um and they came so I really appreciate them for that you know um the detectives LAPD detectives um for doing that they came and they did arrest that person um now at that time I know the police detective he asked me he said um he mentioned, he said, um, do you have a pig Bible? And I was like, mm. I said, well, I mean, you know, um, I guess he was referencing, he was saying something about that, you know, the person had a pink Bible and he was thinking they had stole the pink Bible out of my car. You know, I'm like, you know, I'm a Christian and yeah, I do keep Bibles everywhere. You know, so I don't know. I could have had one, you know, in there. Um, now, as I told, oh, uh, and because, and then after that, that detective had told me that, um, that um, this person was a devil worshiper, you know, that, that the person had a pink Bible and this person was a devil worshiper, you know, I guess he was feeling like that could have something to do why they put the blood in the paper scene in front of my car, that person, um, on April 6, 2021. Um, but then as I just told the detective um, yesterday, I told him, well, you know, the pink Bible that I knew that I had, I actually found that Bible in my house. So, um, you know, they, she didn't take a peak Bible. Um, he's not that Bible out of my car. And I don't know. I could have another Bible in there and they couldn't take it. I don't know. Again, um, that's what the detective referenced me to. Now, this detective I talked to, he was like, well, no, I didn't. You know, and so it might have been actually, it might have been another, but I know one of them, you know, had said something to me about that. Um, and, um, you know, it sort of challenged me that then this detective was trying to say, no, no, you said that. But I'm like, no, because I would not have said anything about a Bible in a car because I was focused on the hate crime <laughs> done to me um, about, you know, the harassment that the person is doing to me and the hate crime, you know, which has me scared not knowing, you know, if, she, if that person is going to come back and literally hurt me or kill me or something, you know. Um, and as I referenced that detective, like, no, that's how I know about the pink Bible because the detective that mentioned that to me specifically mentioned a pink Bible, you know, um, and when I happened to be doing something in my house and I seen him, I was like, oh, no, this is my pink Bible here. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, I'm a Christian. Y'all know I be preaching every day. I have many of Bibles everywhere. You know what I'm saying? But um, the big picture where I keep trying to keep people focus on, <laughs> sometimes people focus on the inside of the car and focus on this and that. Now, if you focus on the inside of the car, if you focus on the hate note that, you know, they love. But it just seems like when I'm saying the referencing the hate crimes and the the hate that was um, launched towards me by this person, I don't know, it just seemed like it seems to be downplayed and uh, to me at times, you know, by some people, you know, because um, even like I said, this detective seemed to be more focused on in the car and if they took something out the car on April 6th and, you know, um, and I'm like, well, not that I'm aware of, you know, again, my focus was on what they did on the outside of my car on April 6th and that was about the blood like paper literally in front of my car where I couldn't even pull off, you know, and then it's like, who would do this? And this is a hate, this is more hate crime, you know, done towards me, you know. And again, remember on March 30th, 2021, they left the hate note in my car. 
Um, so again, the point of this video is please come to the LA <laughs> Superior Court um, on Thursday, May 19, 2022 to the third floor. It's Department 34, it says room 313, or if you might just have to be in the hall or whatever, um, you know, you can come up to me and let me know I'm here to support you. You know, that's fine. You know, just don't do anything to creep me out. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying, you know, um, this video. And again, unfortunately, for the good people that would be willing to support me to know about it, I have to put the video out publicly. Um, but please, people who are not for me, not trying to help me or support me, please do not come. <laughs> this is not for you and um for people who are creepy and you know have other things in mind that's not what this video is for this video i'm putting it out and i have to is i put it on youtube it is public you know um but this video is about people coming to support me and being there for me as a black woman um you know going to be a witness about what happened to me and that has experienced a hate crime and sometimes not really feeling supported or sometimes not even really feeling like the people are, are you know, the people in power, you know, that has authority, you know, are, are really seeing this as a hate crime, but that is exactly what it is. And I felt like Cho and some others, you know, have felt like it is a hate crime, but, you know, and that's to me where the racism comes about. I don't know, it's like where they act like, you know, black women can't, you know, people can't do a hate crime against, uh, you know, which that's a racist thought, you know, again, sometimes we have to stay prayed up because sometimes when they see us black women, they think we are the aggressors. They think we are the ones that done something to someone else versus um, accepting that, you know, this Asian woman did something against me, which is a hate crime. You know, I didn't do, I didn't know this woman, you know, I know nothing about this woman or nothing, you know, um, you know, and that's where race can sometimes come into place because just merely because I'm a black woman, um, people misjudging me or, or not even willing to help me or not even willing to make sure that this person is convicted for the hate crime that they've done. So I don't want this person out because I don't know if the person's going to come do something else to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, so again, that's the whole key point of this video. Now, I don't like to go past 30 minutes, so... Um, I'm going to be wrapping this up. So again, it's a hate crime done against me. And then today, while I was at the um, victims unit, you know, I got different information about, you know, uh, hate crimes done to you, uh, Mars Law, um, you know, um, crime victims, know your rights, um, you know, victims restitution guide, um, you know, just, you know, different information, um, our rights to know certain information, because also I've been trying to get the police report for a year because I'm thinking as a victim, you know, I should be able to see the police police report and I have not received the police report. And I asked the detective again yesterday. So yesterday was May um, 17, 2022, because remember this stuff happened in 2021, you know, but it's just now I'm being subpoenaed to go to court to witness and testify about what um, was done to me um, on tomorrow, Thursday, or you may be watching this video right now on Thursday, May 19, 2022. So please come <laughs> to the L.A. Superior Court located at 210 West Temple Street um, in Los Angeles, California, 90012. You know, I give you the full address just in case you need to put into your GPS to get there. The train does come there too. Um, you would get off if you caught a train, you could catch the purple line or the red line and, um, it would, um, which I know now they've changed the trains to letters. So I don't know what letter the red line is right now or what letter they call the purple line, but they both will go to, um, Temple, um, uh, Temple and uh, First um, Street. So that would be the one you would get off. It's the exit right before the last exit, which on the train, the last exit would be Union State. So not the Union State, but the exit before that, um, where you, you can catch the train there. Um, so you don't have to deal with even the parking challenges um, there. But I need your support. So, um, so it's almost uh, the 30 minute mark. So again, I'm Michelle Hope Walker. Um, again, you can leave me a message on my social media. Um, Twitter is hope at hope underscore speaks. Um, Instagram is Michelle Hope Walker Speaks. 
Facebook is Michelle Hope Walker Speaks, period. Listen, I need your support. Y'all, I'm doing this video right now on May 18, 2022. Um, and I'm Michelle Hope Walker. And um, again, a hate crime was done against me. And so tomorrow I go to be a witness, but I just would like as much support as possible in the court with me. Um, so please come, please come. Um, and please help leave me safe, you know. Um, all right, so thank you for all that you do. Again, I'm Michelle Hope Walker, and I just thank you. And please come to the LA court to please support me. Thank you.